Minister of Democratic Institutions, Marianne Monsaf, she became the second youngest Canadian cabinet minister in our history, and we were told at the time to the first to have been born in Afghanistan. However, very recently, the minister learned that part of what she was told and believed about her past was not true. The Globe and Mail is reporting this morning that Maria Monsef was not born in Afghanistan, but was actually born in Iran. She joins me now for this television exclusive here in studio. Welcome to your morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so this information would rock anybody, certainly on a, a personal level, and we will get to that. You also happen to be a politician, uh, a Canadian cabinet minister. So now, does that mean you have a passport? with wrong information? Do you have a refugee a status historically that has wrong information? I mean, what does this actually mean for you? Well, that's certainly the question that I've been asking myself the last few days is what does this actually mean? What has changed? And, you know, at first when I took this information in about a week ago, I took it in as a Canadian citizen where, you know, if it doesn't matter if your parents are a refugee, it doesn't matter if your parents are a permanent resident, if you're born on Canadian soil, you're a Canadian citizen. It's the ultimate lottery, I believe. So that's the lens that I took this all in when I first heard about it and thought, who am I? What is this about? What does this mean? And then a day or two later, I realized that that's actually a place of privilege. In Canada, you may be accepted as a Canadian citizen if you're born here, but it's not the case in most places in the world. And so in Afghanistan and in places like Iran, it's who your parents are. It's patrilineal. So culturally uh, and legally, it doesn't matter where you're born. If your parents are Afghan, as mine are, uh, you're an Afghan citizen. So um, I'm still a Canadian citizen. I'm still an Afghan citizen and certainly there's some paperwork that I'm working on, but uh, as days go by and as difficult as this has been to process for me and my family and uh, to do it with, with, with Canadians uh, watching and many being supportive, not much has changed, but something inside has changed and it'll take a few days, probably a few months. I don't know how long to come to terms with that. I would like to go back. How did you first find out? So we, uh, the team had been approached by uh, Mr. Fife uh, asking if- At the Globe and Mail. At the Globe and Mail, asking if this were, this were true. And, uh, you know, I called up my mom and just being really silly about it. Like, mom, like, this is silly, right? Uh, and uh, she was able to give me a call back the night after we'd done a, a specially successful uh, town hall on electoral reform in Kitchener-Waterloo. Uh, and so we're on the highway, we're on our way back from Kitchener to Toronto, and I get the call, and we didn't even get too many words in before. I just, I asked the team to pull over, and that's when I found out. It was actually about a week ago, and the next morning I was here uh, talking to Ben about electoral reform and holding it together. So I can imagine that would have been maybe a difficult conversation then to have with mom, beyond initial the, come on, mom. What did your mother have to say about this? That there was merit to the question, uh, that she was sorry, that, you know, for her, it wasn't a big deal. All these years, you know, Iran certainly didn't accept us as citizens. We were always Afghan. You know, the food, the culture, the clothes, the family, the language, it's all Afghan. And so for her and in our culture, she said, it never mattered, it didn't make a difference. And she was sorry, and she's still sorry. I'm still getting text messages with, I did, I did what I thought was the right thing, and you know, I did what I had to do to protect you and shield you and your sisters from some things that you didn't need to know about, and this wasn't important. And she's sorry, and moms. I mean, it's hard to get to get upset at any, I'm sure anyone would be uh, in a difficult position to get mad at mom. But at some point um, in your conversations this last week, did you ever ask her, you know, maybe when you started to have this um, idea to run for public office, mayor of Peterborough in 2014, you ran. Then, of course, uh, being uh, in this position now as minister, uh, this has been a very public situation. At any point did she say to you, you know, maybe I should have, said something to you then? Now she's saying that, but at first, you know, for her, 
it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, a, it's a cultural thing that for her, it wasn't a big deal. And I think that by the time she realized uh, what this meant, she now understands how important it is to be that specific, to be that concise. And, you know, in our, in, in the serious, awkward conversation we've had in the last couple of days, you know, she's explained how sorry she is. And there's been yelling in Dari, and there's been crying, and there's been, is this true? Is this true? Is this true? Mm -hmm. And she's, she looked at me the other day and finally she said, is this how it's going to be? You're just, is this how it's going to be with everything? But, you know, at first I was mad at uh, the story coming out. And then I was mad at her for, you knew what this meant and you didn't tell me. But now, Musa, I'm mostly mad at myself. I'm, Why so? I'm mad at myself because, because I got angry at her. I mean, if you have kids, right? If you were in a war zone, if you were in Afghanistan, where it's a place of conflict and all around you, people are either disappearing or being killed, including your brother and husband. If you're in Iran as a refugee and you realize as a widow, you don't have any opportunities to provide a means for your kids and you gotta get out of there. What would you do? What wouldn't you do? What wouldn't you say? What wouldn't you? right to get those kids out of a horrible situation and to safety. And so I've been mad at myself because, believe it or not, I forgot. I forgot, I, you tell your story so many times that it becomes a story and not your story. I forgot what we gave up to come here. I forgot what she gave up to come here and now I'm discovering that all these years she's been carrying burdens that I can't even imagine. So I'm mad at myself because I actually have no right to be angry at her. It's powerful. Uh, you know, um, it's, this is a story today that of course everybody is talking about, but um, there is also a story about moving expenses with your partner. There is also talk with China, an extradition treaty. There's a lot of work that has to get done. Wait, wait, wait. Has to I, wait, wait, wait. I do not have a partner. And so who's this partner's moving expenses? No, I'm not partner. There's okay. in your party. Okay. In your party. It's not an easy start to the fall session. So then this idea of how do you get to work? You have this personal, um, you know, bombshell that you're managing and you have to work. So how now do you power forward? I think I've picked up this trait from lots of other uh, family members, including my mom. They don't, they don't talk about these things, right? They don't mm -hmm. talk about what happened. We, I remember being little and asking questions and they didn't answer well. And being a five-year-old telling my little sisters, do not ask mom about dad. It makes her upset. So certain questions you don't ask. And I've learned while I don't condone that, I don't, it's not for me to judge. But what that's taught me is the ability to compartmentalize. And so like that night when I found out, pulled over on the side of the road, had my breakdown and the questions, and it'll take time to process all of this. But the next morning I was here and going out and continuing with electoral reform. And honestly, I think my work is going to be therapy for me. My work is directly linked to what happened to me as a kid. The reason I care about politics is because I remember as a little girl that everything that was happening to my family and me was happening because politicians were sitting around tables making decisions on our behalf. And so I'm out there talking to people about their democracy and I'm out there talking to young people and getting them excited, not just about voting, but about putting their names on the ballot and supporting other people. And so. What I've learned as a good coping mechanism over the years is just channel that pain and channel that anger into something productive. And really, what else can I do? Well, we do wish you the very best of luck. Uh, I know you're just at the beginning of this journey, but thank you so much for, for speaking with us here on your morning today. Thanks for having me. Thank you.
Uh, now, we did uh, reach out to uh, Ronna Ambrose's office this morning about the story, uh, and they have responded to us saying, quote, the Conservative Party does not have a comment on this, as this is a personal matter 